Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I am delighted to be joined by the director of Oasis, Matt Wasong. It's so good to have you here. Thank, uh, you. thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this wonderful uh, experience at New Filmmakers LA. Um, but for those that haven't seen Oasis, let's take a look at a clip. I've never seen anything green before. Should have seen it years ago. Really used to be something. I bet you're thirsty. Yes. Thanks. How'd you manage? <laughs> you have no idea. Um, Matt, you know, I, I, I love the, I love your film because you're just saving the world and the environment as well at the same time. Uh, but for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a, a brief synopsis. Of course. Uh, so it's set in a world where we've run completely out of fresh water and it follows a, you know, a rambunctious young survivor and a mysterious woman as they both, you know, go about getting the one thing that everyone needs to survive, uh, which is fresh water. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it just follows them, you know, over the course of a single day in this world. It's, it's, it, I mean, I'm drinking water right now and I'm already, it's already changed my world because I've already just think it twice and my appreciation, everything else. And I love how, where that story was inspired by, tell us a bit about how this came about. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, this story was inspired actually through a series of conversations I had with my dad. Uh, so he had always been fascinated uh, by this idea that future wars are going to be fought over water. Uh, it's a precious natural resource that we all have. It's running out uh, and we need to figure out, you know, what to do to get it. And so, you know, growing up every, every few years, he'd check in and he'd be like, remember that idea that I had? Mm -hmm. um, and so finally, you know, it came time to, to actually make a film about the environment. And I thought that this was the perfect idea. And so, you know, took that broad concept and thought about, you know, what would someone go through to get fresh water in a world where it's not readily accessible? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, you, I, I love from the first moment I knew in the film that I was just, it, it was such an interesting experience that I felt like this was like the future, but it didn't feel too far out eerily enough. Yeah. How did you go about kind of creating that atmosphere and, and, and what was your kind of intentions of, of making it future, but also not too far from the distant future? Of course. Uh, so, I mean, going about it, it was actually really interesting. So the entire film, even though it looks like, you know, we go from a desert to this, you know, oasis house that's also in the middle of a desert to this underground, uh, you know, cellar. Those three were actually all within 10 miles of each other in Southern California. Uh, so when going about it, you know, I really tried to look for places that had already looked aged. Uh, we really had to go about this with a limited budget and, and a limited, you know, schedule. We only had three days to complete the whole project. So we really had to be as creative as possible when it came to figuring out how we were going to get everything we needed. Uh, so really when it came down to it is, is we first prioritized buildings that looked really old uh, and a lot of historic Old Town Orange, which is where uh, my school Chapman University was. Uh, it's a bunch of old, you know, sheet metal buildings that are all completely rusted and it's all falling apart. So it, it really fit the vibe of really what I was going for. Uh, and so that was, you know, definitely the primary thought uh, in terms of, you know, how am I gonna make this as simple as possible for my team uh, while also, you know, utilizing some great, you know, structures out there uh, yeah. that I think would well, be great to show in the film. You had an interesting journey about how you, obviously you brought your, your, your very distinctive characters, together, let's say that. Thank you. <laughs> um, and um, really, very good. Obviously, got some method actors in there and got some people that are part of your life. Tell us about how you put your cast together. Yes. Uh, so I started the cast first and foremost with our lead, uh, who plays Jake. His name's Kendall Slocum. He's a great actor. Uh, I wrote this in with it in mind that I was going to go to him first and be like, hey, this is for you. Would love to do something. And uh, both myself and my producer had been talking to him about the ideas. We were developing it. And he was just on board from day one, no matter what role he had. 
Uh, so we started with him, which was fantastic. And I was so happy to have him on board. And then after that, you know, we went to just, I'd say very conventional ways of getting a cast. You know, we went to Backstage Magazine, LA Casting, put out a few casting calls, sorted through, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of actors that apply uh, until we settled on uh, Joseph Lopez, who plays our beggar, and our lead actress, Heather Livingood. Uh, and the two of them lived in LA. Uh, they really fit the role. They spoke about it with like such passion and interest. Uh, like Heather got so into the character before we had even, you know, given her the role. She was just asking questions about, you know, what her backstory is, what led her to do these things. Uh, and so that was really great for kind of sparking that initial connection in terms of, you know, finding the leads and assembling the cast. Well, I mean, you created this, you know, oasis atmosphere. Which I was, just, I wanted to live in it. Like it was just like, <laughs> wow, what is this beautiful, you know, naturalistic yeah. experience. Um, and I love the journey you mentioned the film festival, kind of like how you, your production design and how you created, create and put it together. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Of course. Yeah. So we put it together uh, first, I'd say, you know, obviously we started with the locations that we found making it as simple as possible for her to, you know, focus on the one thing that was really important, which was Daisy's machine that we see at the end. Uh, so that was something going into it that we always knew that that would be in it. Uh, and so, you know, from day one, we were like, we need to think of designs. How would this thing work? Uh, going into it, I tried to, I'd say it's my fatal flaw in that I try to make things as realistic as possible. So while going through the design of this, you know, machine, I was going on Reddit and asking, you know, actual scientists and engineers being like, is this possible? Can you do something like this? And if so, is this the way you would do it? And I got some comments that were like, this is very disturbing. And I hope you're not planning on actually doing this, but yes, it could work. Wow. Um so it's all it's all it's all real, uh, according to Reddit. However, not you know. Yeah, Thank check you, your sources before actually building a machine like this, or just don't build a machine like this. Um, but yeah, and then you know, assembling her oasis, I'd say that was the most fun part. Just getting all my friends and you know our production designer, everyone who you know has plants or or you know different things that they've rescued or found from their yards, and it was really just you know asking everyone that we could. Um, because plants are expensive and we didn't want to, we didn't want to end up killing any. So, you know, we used what we could borrow, went on trips to Home Depot to dumpster dive in the back uh, to try to scavenge some plants that they had thrown away. And, and we were really able to build up this whole oasis uh, in that living room, which was so great to walk through when it was all set up. Amazing to see this, this world that you created. And I, again, yeah. I just, I just, I, it was amazing to me, the resources that you used to just create this, this wonderful effect. Um, now, obviously, you know, early in your career making a film, I'm so glad that you made a film that is about the environment. And like you said, you know, people, um, you know, within a younger age group from Gen Z to, to millennials, you know, this is essentially we've got to protect now for our future. Uh, that was something that was important to you as well, wasn't it? Of course. Yeah. No, I, I really, truly think that for my generation, one of our biggest fights is the environment. Uh, growing up, it was always the most important thing I'd say on most of my peers' minds, you know, I can vividly remember going through elementary school as, you know, the whole reduce, reuse, recycle campaign was making its way across the United States. And, and we'd always just been very conscious of that. Uh, and so to be able to kind of bring this to a wider audience is really something that's great, especially at a time like now where I feel like, uh, you know, climate change, while it is an important issue and continues to be an important issue, I feel like it's one that continually gets pushed back in mm -hmm. favor of, of more immediate things. Mm -hmm. And the fear is that by the time it becomes an immediate thing, it's gonna to be too late to actually do anything about it. And yeah. Oasis is one of the worlds we could end up living in if we let it get that far. Yeah, no, most definitely. I mean, taking that to sort of more of a sort of audience kind of perspective, like what did you, I mean, you you have touched upon it, but what what did you kind of want your immediate audience to kind of take from the film? Yeah, uh, so I'd say the biggest thing I want I wanted my audience to take away from the film was just how important an issue this is because I feel like people overlook it and they think, oh, it'll just become a, a few degrees hotter, you know, oh, a few beaches in Florida might you know lose yeah. a few meters of sand, but really, it's it's catastrophic. 
and it will completely change the way that, you know, I I'd say my grandchildren and your grandchildren uh, will live their everyday lives. And so it was kind of, you know, trying to, to put this unfathomable thing, unfathomable, apologies, unfathomable thing uh, for, I'd say some of these older generations into, you know, actual pictures that they could see and be like, this is, this is what we think will happen if we, if yeah. we keep, you know, going down this bad path. Yeah. Uh, well, thank so you for giving really the narrative perspective on what that actually could look like. Cause I, I watched it like as much as I was kind of haunted by uh, what her, her, her plans were. <laughs> um, there was a very important element of that. This is actually something that doesn't feel like it, it might not happen. It feels very real, sadly yeah. as well. Um, in terms of production, pre-production, post-production, production itself, what was the biggest challenge that you had in making it? Of course. So I'd say that the most difficult challenge, uh, but honestly, I'd say it was also the most rewarding was our shooting schedule. Uh, Chapman University only gave us three days to film this. And that's standard for all their projects. Uh, you know, they give you a weekend and you have a weekend to get 10 pages done. And it's, it's a reasonable awesome. ask. It's a very reasonable ask. And so that was definitely the biggest challenge in terms of prioritizing, you know, the coverage I needed, uh, the locations that I wanted and, and the different moments that I wanted to happen. And in doing so, it made me, you know, it put me in a few tough spots on set where I had to, you know, if it was a crucial scene, I had to be like, you know what, I, I as much as I want to do another take of this, I, we have to cut it right now if we want to get, you know, that last shot of uh, Daisy in her, her bathroom at the end uh, with the water. You know, so we had to really prioritize and, and schedule around those three days to make sure that we could absolutely get everything that we needed to tell the whole story uh, mm-hmm. without compromising. And what has been, what is, I mean, of course, it's a very interesting kind of festival run we have on right now. We're obviously yeah. very grateful to have your film with us at New Filmmakers LA, but what's the experience been like for you and the reaction been? Uh, so the reaction has been great. I mean, I wish that I could have been in person at any of the festivals that we premiered at. Uh, you know, it's really started to pick up, I'd say recently, I finished this film back in, I believe it was 2019 now. So it's been, it's been a little while. And so, you know, that first year, you know, we, we took our time and I waited a little bit to submit and, you know, starting to hear back right as the pandemic hit was a bit upsetting, I'd say. Yeah. Um, but through programs like New Filmmakers LA and this other great festival I was in uh, called the Blackbird International Film Festival, uh, you know, they, you put on great online showcases where you can watch all the films, um, in new filmmakers, LA case, you guys put on that great Q and a, and I was actually able to interact with people, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, like talking to people and getting the comments are really great. And actually there was a mixer with the filmmakers before, uh, I believe it was before the Q and a yesterday and talking to all of them, we all kind of came to this consensus a little bit that putting your films online is really great because you get that immediate feedback from people. Yeah. People being able to have this film on YouTube and being able to see people come in and comment and be like, you know, didn't expect that to happen or, or love this part or, or love that part. Or even people saying, you know, I hated this. It was, it was awful. Um, you know, all the same, I, I think it's really great to be able to kind of see the immediate reaction because at a yeah. film festival, you might get that. Um, but only if you're lucky enough to actually hear people's conversations about it. That's and true. So, very, very good point. Um, very good point there. And, and nice, gr- you know, really good sort of um, intimate conversations that you wouldn't normally also get in a crowd of people as well, which is also um, really, really special. Um, what is, I mean, even in this kind of juncture, what is next for you in terms of what projects you're interested in doing next? Of course. So I have to say the past year has actually been really great. Um, I recently started a creative house with a few other graduates from Chapman. And in the past year, we have been you know, developing short films. We've shot a feature uh, and we've been doing a lot of music videos and commercial work as well. A uh, music video I just shot actually just premiered on MTV last week. Uh, oh. It's Cardinal by Ben Beal. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so I'm very excited for that. And then you know, going forward, really just trying to get more music video projects, trying to you know, start production on another short film once I feel inspired enough to have that idea that I want yeah. to pursue. Uh, but in the meantime, it's, it's really just great to do these little, you know, exercises and, and sketches and short films because it allows you to just, you know, explore a new area or, or a new technique or a new idea that you have 
without so much pressure on it that you have to deliver an entire concept on it. You just have to do, you know, a short music video or something like, or something like that. And mm -hmm. it's been so amazing to collaborate with these artists who all, you know, also want to act in things and they want to yeah. see themselves on screen. And so to have, you know, that enthusiasm from both sides while mm -hmm. doing all these music video projects is really, it's amazing. And, and I really do love doing it. And it's a fantastic way to be spending the pandemic at the moment. Yes. And, and well done you, Matt, because I mean, it's, you know, it's, you've obviously, obviously you also moved to a new city as well. And, you know, during the pandemic, and then you've really, it was so delightful to hear in the Q and A yesterday, you know, that you've really utilized your time despite all that we've had to go <laughs> through in this experience of the last year. And I was so happy to hear, you know, how you progressed and you've come together and, you know, you just basically used every creative, you know, drop that, that you've got and then put it to good work. And I, I love that. And so it's very exciting to hear that. Congratulations on your film and MTV. That's really amazing to have Thank it in the MTV. You can't get a better stage than that. Goodness. No. <laughs> It's amazing. And, you know, Chapman, we've had so many great films from Chapman graduates and new filmmakers. You really yeah. do pull out some amazing work. Even though you're early in your career, is there any um, uh, advice you can maybe share with any uh, student filmmakers, for people who want to go into filmmaking, or anybody, just any advice that you've had in your career as far as important to you? Of course. Um, I'd say, you know, the biggest one, and this is one that I kind of took for granted for a while, but, but a lot of people who I've spoken to over the years, a lot of my mentors have really just said, if you want to direct, you just have to be making things. You have to be doing it all the time, every day. Uh, you have to always be thinking of ideas or things to shoot. And for a while, you know, back in college when, you know, I was busy with other classes and, and busy with my everyday things, I was thinking, you know, that's ridiculous. I can't be directing all the time. I can't be spending every day doing this, but, but since the pandemic started and I've been able to, you know, live in this collaborative environment, it's been amazing. Uh, just being able to throw around ideas every day really has been helping me grow as a filmmaker uh, in terms of the ideas that I've been able to execute and want to tackle. And, you know, I'd say that's really the only way to improve. Just keep, keep doing it. Uh, the other thing I would say is, uh, this is personally for me, I feel like it's it's nice to step away for a little while. If you ever get hung up on a project or if you're getting stuck on a scene or, or you just feel, you know, absolutely, I'd say miserable is a word at some point about, about a project and you're just like, this isn't working, this is the way I want it to be. Just take a, take a break, step away for a week, step away for two weeks and come back to it with refreshed eyes and you'll look at it from such a new perspective. And I think it'll really reinvigorate the way that you look at something. Uh, I love that you shared that. And I, that's such an important thing. Yes, it's good to be consistent, but it's also good to just take a moment, take a breather, take a step away. Because sometimes when you step away, you have a greater perspective when you go back in again to do something. Yeah. So that's great advice. Matt, I, I feel like your sets are always going to be very well balanced. Uh, Thank and, you. <laughs> and that's not everyone's got that. So it's a great energy to have. Um, but we're so grateful that you brought Oasis to us. Um, please yeah. keep making and creating and and making more films for us, please. We, we, of we need course. All right. Always. Uh, and shameless plug right now, follow uh, for short films, music videos, more. It's it's box Fort TV on all platforms, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, anything. <laughs> Thanks very much, Matt. And, um, you know, we're really grateful to have you part of our film festival. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful to be a part of it. And thanks for, for interviewing me and taking the time. Thank you.